Hey everyone, welcome to another Planet Time mini so uh, this week we just got me, Papa Scotch. I'm just being goofy. I've recorded several mini sods today, so things Oh boy, I'm tired of talking. And then I got a later record we gotta do as a group. Alright, whatever. You guys the sausage is me. It's just me, Papa Scotch. Doing another mini sode and another installment of video game movies. This is a uh, kind of an ongoing series where I talk about movies based on video games, not video games based on movies. Movies based on video games. Maybe I'll do movie video games. I don't know. We'll see. But this week we're talking about the Immortal Classic from 2008. And as you know, there's only one video game movie that crushed it in 2008, and that is Max Payne. On this podcast, we have talked about Max Payne One and Max Payne Two. I uh, it's no secret I love those games. Honestly, my favorite might actually be Max Payne 3. That was such a great game. I hope to God someday Rockstar releases another Max Payne, but it's probably wishful thinking. And, you know, whatever. So this movie came out in 2008. It stars Marky Mark Wahlberg, which he probably... I know he hates that, but it's not like I know him personally, so I feel like I can call him Mark... I'll just call him Mark Wahlberg. Dr. Wahlberg plays the titular character, Max Payne. And the other big stars in this played Mona Sachs, who big influence in the game is being played by Mila Kunis. Uh, Another big character that's new for the movie is Bo Bridges, is playing a guy by the name of B.B. Hensley. His name's Bo Bridges. His nickname's B.B. It's, you get it. You're smart. Ludacris is playing Jim Bravora as a very different version of Jim Bravora from the video game. And Chris O'Donnell is another big character who plays a guy by the name of Jason Colvin, who is at the Azir, Azir, Azir company. Uh, uh, other big stars that are in this that maybe have smaller roles, you got Donnell Logue. I believe that's how you pronounce his name, but he is a longtime TV staple. He did a long arc on Sons of Anarchy, which was great. He did a, uh, oh God, what was Terriers? Was that show that he did for one year that everyone still loves? Uh, classic guy. Uh, he was on Gotham for a while. If you saw a picture of him, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Always solid. Love his work. You also have... Olga Kur... Oh, boy, I screwed that up already. One of the former Bond girls is playing Natasha Sachs, Olga Karolenko. Uh, she does a pretty good job. She's not in the movie a whole lot. She dies very quickly. Uh, there isn't as much of a twin thing going on, you know, between the two, but there we are. Uh, there's also a really fun uh, cameo uh, as a scumbag owner, a guy by the name of Andrew Friedman is the guy who plays the scumbag owner. Now, for those of you who don't know who Andrew Friedman is, that's completely fair. I know him and will forever, for the rest of my life, know him as Charlie's creepy, sort of touchy uncle who has an obsession about his hands from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That guy plays the scumbag club owner, and he's great. This is a character actor. Andrew Friedman's been around for years. He's been, in, like I said, Always Sunny. That's where I'm, I remember him from. He was in Glow. He had, like, big budget movies, like he was in Live Free or Die Hard. He's been on TV in Better Call Saul. He is a solid actor. I love him, and I talked about him the most out of any actor on this. That might change. I don't know. Uh, the game, the, the this is based on the first Mac, Max Payne game, but it takes a very different road to get to the end. It completely changes Max Payne's motivations, uh, and the support staff has been added... And everything got way more convoluted than it ever had to be. So let's just start at the beginning. Max Payne is uh, he's, he's on some kind of desk for wayward detectives who were scumbags who did something terrible. Or maybe they just were bad at their job. Or maybe they were kicking the institution a little too hard. He's on the, the jerk desk. The, the one where they th- Kind of like, you ever see the first season of The Wire? All those uh, cops who just got dumped in the shit assignment? Yeah, same concept. But that's where Max Payne is. Uh, no one really gives a shit about any of these cold cases or any of these cases they, they get to do, and they don't have a lot of resources to do those. Uh, he then, Max Payne, a little bit later, he goes into a bathroom and beats the shit out of a guy. The whole point of all of this is these guys were strung out drug people who were going to rob him, and he actually turned the tables and knew them. The whole reason was to talk to this one guy because the backstory, just like in the video game, his wife and little baby were killed by people strung out on this designer drug called V, which is Valkyrie. They get into it a little bit more, and the things they add are very terrible. So this guy who's on V starts uh, hallucinating. Eventually we find out that the hallucinations were caused by the drug. You see angels and demons like 
we're not talking little shadows or maybe kind of confused. We're talking about simulated demon worlds, which Max Payne does see because he takes the drug at the end. It's fucking stupid. So he goes to this club uh, on the follow-up from this guy because the guy said maybe it's at the... Sl- He's, Max Payne is tracking, trying to track down who killed his wife. Every other cop who he used to be friends with in his previous life before this happened, they they just they did a good job at this in the movie where they, they just feel bad for him. And they know that this is consuming him. And all the other cops just kind of are like, yeah, we all know about Max. Just he's he's losing it. But at the same time, like he's still a cop. He's still being a detective. He's just doing this as well. He, maybe he's a little unstable and has a little bit to lose, but just let him do his thing. It'll be fine. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna roll through this story pretty quickly. It's very dumb. He goes to this club. He runs into Olga Kurilenko. Ends up taking her home, and he's like, "I don't know if I'm into this." And she says, "Ooh, what happened to you? Some girl dump you? Ooh, I'm gonna pretend I'm her. What's her name? I miss you so much." And he's like, "Get the fuck out." She leaves. Ends up getting murdered in the street. So this already looks to the law as if Max Payne killed this girl because he left the club with her. Now, we also saw at this club a a little side scene of people with wing tattoos doing this drug and tweaking out hard. And that's another thing I want to talk about. So these people love this drug so hard, this Valkyrie drug, they're getting tattoos of wings. So is that like their universes and like analog of these people who are really into marijuana and marijuana culture and get like pot leaf tattoos? Is that, I guess that's what that's supposed to be. But like, imagine people who are super duper into like heroin getting fucking heroin tattoos. It's wild. We're supposed to buy this, I guess. So we keep moving on. And after uh, Olga gets killed, Max's old partner from his old desk comes. And that's the Donald Logue. He comes in and is like, hey, this doesn't look good. You know that, right? Like, you know this as looks. You got to come talk to us. Uh, and Max Payne's like, fuck you. You didn't do anything to find the killer of my, my wife, whatever. We're cool, but stay the fuck out of my way. Not that I'd hurt you, but you're not helping. So just just come on, just leave. That's kind of the vibe I got from their relationship. So Donald Logue says, fuck this. So he starts looking, and he, he's looking through the folder of the previous case of Max Payne's wife, and he finds that one of the killers has the same tattoo that Olga Karolenko had. So he's like, holy shit, this is related, and it has to do with V. At the time, they didn't realize it had to do with V. So he goes, he calls Max. He's like, yo, get to the fucking... Your apartment, I'm going to meet you there. I got something new. And Max Payne goes there, and Donald Logue is dead. Max Payne gets attacked and left there. Basically, the idea is to frame Max for this murder, and he's already implicated in the Olga Kurilenko one, so it's not looking good for Max. We know he didn't do any of this. Someone else is involved, but the cops don't. That's not great. Bo Bridges, who is now working privately as some kind of businessman. I think he's head of security for this Azure company. And he well, used to be Max's boss when they were both cops. So he's trying to be like the dad figure and be like, hey, um, I'm at the hospital with you. I'm, I'm not with the police. Like, I'm not here to question you. Don't be an asshole about this. I'm genuinely concerned about your well-being. Like, what's going on? So Max fills him in. He goes, OK, well, let's uh, let's go to let's go stop at my office. All right, it's, it's been like a couple days. Max Payne had been knocked out. Donald Logue's funeral is happening that day. Uh, Donald Logue was killed. I just mentioned that, I think. If not, Donald Logue was killed before Max got to his apartment. Max found him dead. Max gets knocked out. They go to Azure, this big company. Um, Max Payne's wife used to also work at this company. So Bo Bridges and her, and like there's this whole incestuous, you got to know people to be, do stuff. Um, he gets to the funeral. Max Payne does. And DL's wife slaps him and says, it's your fault. Jim Prevera, played by Ludacris, shows up and arrests him. Or basically says, you got to come. He doesn't arrest him, but he's like, you got to come talk to us. So you're connected to both. Get the fuck over here. We got to have a conversation. Max goes there. They talk. Max gives him nothing. He says, this is all bullshit. I don't care. I'm leaving. Max does not do anything to clear his name or calmly explain why this happens. He's like, fuck you. You're not helping me survive, uh, solve this murder of my wife. I don't need this. So he breaks into Donald Logue's office, steals a bunch of the evidence, and then he puts it together that 
what Donald Logue had. And he finds the connection, and he's like, this got him killed. There's something here. So Mona and Max now decide to team up because their paths are crossing. The last person Olga called, Mona Sachs' sister, Mila Kunis' sister, was a guy by the name of Owen Gray. And then he noticed through the cell phone records, Max Payne found out that she had called Owen Gray as well. So he's like, they have the tattoos. There's something here. And Mona and Max basically are at each other's throats, but they're like, we want the same thing. I want to know who killed my wife. You want to know who killed your sister. They're connected. Let's fucking work together for a minute and let's solve this together. Pool our resources. You know, when you find out who killed your sister, we'll be done here with you and then I'll go do my thing. So she's like, yeah, okay. Eventually they, they come around. They're two badasses, whatever. They find Owen. He jumps out. He's all tweaking out on, on this V. And in the in the movie, there's it's a really nice sequence where he's like standing by an open area and he's about to jump, but maybe not. And he's kind of scared. And then there's a... The demons that you see on V are supposed to be not there. They're supposed to be hallucinations. They're supposed to be some kind of nutso bullshit. But in this scene, it appeared as if the demon grabbed Owen and pulled him out of the window. But the demon is only seen by Gray, and I guess they can touch you. It's very abstract and was completely unnecessary for any of this bullshit. It could have just been like, hey, Valkyrie, we love Valkyrie. We like the wings. That's it. But they're seeing actual fucking demons or some bullshit. Anyway, after he gets killed... Uh, Mila goes to talk to another underground gang member called Lincoln. Uh, they're talking a little bit about what Olga was like, what her last days were like. Mila Kunis then says, I want to find out who killed my sister. Uh, apparently he might be labeled or he might be wrapped up in something Max Payne's looking into. And the guy's like, fuck, Max Payne, you stay away from that crazy asshole. Max goes to the docks into his secret detective shack, which is like an, a, a, one of those uh, shipping containers that he made into an office and has a whole bunch of files. I don't know why. He needed to do this. Why he couldn't just rent a place and have all the files, but apparently this is what he had to do. So, all right. Uh, Brevera and Bo Bridges meet. They talk about Max Payne and his backstory and how he was happy before. If you played the video game, this is all old hat, but I guess people in the movie didn't see it. Uh, he BB, Bo Bridges, tells Brevera that, you know, Max Payne, he thinks he has something. He's going to kill people. He's in danger. You need to bring him in. And this is Bo Bridges being like, this is my friend. Like, this has got to stop. And uh, Max Payne then meets with Chris O'Donnell, who plays that Corbin guy. And he talks to him a little bit. He realizes he's lying. He punches him out. And this all gets around to, I have a folder. This is Chris O'Donnell. I have a folder that says exactly why this happened. The Azure company was trying to make super soldiers, but the Valkyrie only worked in 1% of them. And the other 99% tweaked out and went fucking insane and saw demons. And now they're trying to cover it up. One, the only super soldier that was actually successful in this group was a guy by the name of Jack Lupino, who was a sergeant in the army, which is completely different than the Jack Lupino backstory we had previously in the game. They just kind of took his name and made him a super soldier. And that's kind of Max's antagonist throughout the whole game. Movie, sorry, the whole movie. And... Th- Basically, O'Donnell says, yeah, I knew your wife. She was killed because of the drug. And Max Payne says, explain more. And he goes, you need to protect me because they're going to fucking kill me. And I have it all in this file. We need to get out of here. And 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 then I'll, I'll confess to everything in court. They're leaving. Max Payne pulled a gun. He's escorting him out like fucking Old West style as a body shield. And then the private security force, which looks a lot like a SWAT team for Azure, they show up. They see O'Donnell. They see Max Payne. And they fucking shoot Chris O'Donnell, killing him. Max Payne ends up escaping after running into Brevora, because remember, Brevora was in the building talking to Bo Bridges. And then Max Payne, Mona, they go over the evidence. They found out about Lupino. Uh, They find, they know that he's in a club club called Ragnarok. They go there, they fuck him up, they kill him. It ends up being Bo Bridges, BB, who kills Jack Lupino, shoots him, murders him, because he was going to kill Max. And then... Uh, Max is basically like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's like, I heard you went here, uh, this Club Ragnarok. Again, from the the game, but very different. About who who fucking... Anyway, so BB's thugs knock out Max Payne. They take him to uh, the frozen docks of the Hudson River somewhere in New York, and they are about to throw him in. And he's like, Bo Bridges is like, yeah, I killed Michelle. And 
I had to get rid of the baby too, or he didn't really feel bad about killing a baby, which is kind of fucked up. But he had to. I don't know why he had to kill the baby because Michelle got too close. I don't. I don't understand why. I missed that part. They try to kill Max. He jumps in the water. He gets out. He's about to freeze to death, and this V drug makes you run hot. Bo Bridges slipped a little bit in his uh, breast pocket, so it would look like he was a drugged out tweaker. But he ended up not drowning. He took it. He gets fired up. There's demons everywhere. And then this is the beginning of the end of the movie, because back at the station, Bravora is talking to the cops. The cops are like, we're going to go kill him. We're going to kill him. And Bravora's like, hey, I'm, we're fucking detectives. We're going to detect. And this whole thing stinks in the police force, frankly. And the cops are like, we're going to do it our way. And then Bravora's like, actually, I brought some friends in. And it's the FBI there. So these cops aren't going to get away with any shit. Basically, this is a scene to tell us the actual police are now taken off the board. Max goes to the AJ company, fucking shoots up the place like a crazy person. BB got tipped off he was coming, so he's getting there to escape. Uh, guns blazing, there's demons everywhere, there's choppers, there's terrible, terrible demon CGI because Max Payne is tweaking like a motherfucker. He has a minute, Mona saves him as he's tweaking and just, uh, whatever. And we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. And eventually he kills Bo Bridges and somehow isn't locked up for the rest of his life for this despite the fact he went there to murder a bunch of people. Regardless if they were right or wrong, he murdered a bunch. Uh, I guess it all came out of what they did, but that still doesn't justify why Max did that. As you can tell from me talking about this story, very different from the video game, Max's motivation is completely different. He still wants to find out who killed his wife. In the video game, he was an undercover cop, and his best lead got killed, who was kind of like the Donald Logue version. And then he went on a single rampage one night through New York in a huge snowstorm to try and find all these answers because he'd made these underground contacts and he's just shooting his way up the ladder because he basically had enough. That's crazy Max Payne. Uh, the, this movie tried to shoehorn a, a super soldier thing. Uh, his wife getting killed for business reasons. They're setting up Azure as the villain. And I forget the name of the woman, but the main woman who is the villain in the video game is like a small, stupid role. And I guess they set her up for a sequel and an after credit sequence, but that's not going to happen because the movie sucked. Then I found out they did make a sequel. I don't know. We'll see if that actually is. T- I don't know what that is. Uh, the only pro for this movie is that it looked good. Like it looked, the look of the film was aesthetically pleasing and it makes sense with the comic. That's where the good parts about this movie end. Everything else, I'm going to go ahead and fucking light it up. All the fun, like morbid, dark humor about the Max Payne game is gone. The self-narration stuff is barely there in the beginning, but it's in the video game, it was a way for Max Payne to process what he was doing, justify it, and it's just completely gone now, which was a bummer. Uh, the, the demons being literal demons was fucking stupid and a waste of money and just very dumb. There was no reason to have that. Uh, In the video game, there was times when they made Max take it and he got into some creepy, weird dream sequence, which they could have easily done, but instead they shoehorned in the stupid fucking demons. There was barely any bullet time in the movie, which is this thing, The Matrix, and the Max Payne game, you know, I mean, obviously The Matrix made bullet time more prevalent but the max Payne game is a big part of the game and they just didn't they barely had like two slow motion shots maybe in the whole fucking thing which was very stupid it should have been more like john woo stylized like slow-mo full gunfights that would have been awesome so um that my biggest problem that i had is that they basically added in these other side characters who were they tried to make complex it didn't do a good job And they basically inflated the story past the point where it was good. It was, it had too much fat on the bones. The movie took place over like four days, not just one crazy night. And in the video game, you at least understand Max's plight. You understand what he's trying to accomplish. You understand that he's killing terrible people. And then by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, Max is on a drug and going ballistic. It's not like rampaging. It's not good. It doesn't, the end of the Max Payne game gave me some catharsis. It, it said it's over. It's Max has been through hell, but he solved the case and brought those people to justice. They were going for that in the movie, 
And by the end of it, I just fucking hated Max Payne and thought he was a complete piece of shit. Uh, Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis were bad casting. Uh, they're, they're both good in other things. Mila Kunis probably has been amazing in some of the things she's done, but they were both miscast. I thought it would have been a better choice to switch Mila Kunis and Olga Kurilenko's roles. I thought Olga was more was better, and that didn't obviously didn't happen. That's what I would have done. Uh, but mostly, I was just very surprised that they they had this amazing template from the video game where it takes place over one night in a snowstorm, and it's just chaos, chaos, running to one point, no time to think about stuff, just following leads, and they completely changed it into a multi-day thing with this huge, complicated backstory of partner backstabbing, NYPD politics, corruption, which was all in the game, but it wasn't a focal of the point. It was Max's Crazy Night. You had that great template of Max's Crazy Night, and it just, that was, like, you fucked it up. You fucked it up. It would so it'd be so much better and uh the a better version of the Max Payne video game put into a movie is the movie Running Scared with Paul Walker. That is a better version. And it has actually, you know what, maybe that's where they got the idea. Cause in the movie Running Scared with Paul Walker, it is an undercover cop who's in too deep, who has his son stolen, taken away, kidnapped. And he has to go find him over one wild, crazy night. And there's all kinds of far fucking dark stuff. I need to watch the movie again. I'm going to watch it. I'll talk about it in the podcast one of these weeks. Whenever. I might, because of the way this is being recorded, I might talk about Running Scared weeks ago. And you're just hearing about me thinking about it now. It's crazy, right? It's production. You know, some things we do early that we can get out of the way. Some things wait till the last minute. You're getting some inside baseball here. But anyway, let's wrap this up. I, I also There was no mob in this, or there was barely any mob, which was a big part of the video game because the mob was like the front for the corporation doing all the horrible shit, and it wasn't until you dug deeper you found the corporation was involved. Now, I'm not saying that was even necessary in the game, but you had so many colorful, great mob characters in the game, you just didn't transfer, and it was all about the corporations being terrible, which... And I, I'm okay with that. I'm not saying... I just I felt like you missed a lot of the game's spirit by taking that out. But I guess it also makes sense that if Max Payne was never undercover in the movie, why would he have all these mob contacts? So, fine, I'll call that a wash. I thought it was weird, and it was a big part, but I'll call it a wash. And again, games do not have... Movies don't have to be exactly like the game. It makes sense to, cre- to take creative license, to take the bones of the video game story and expand it. But this was just a bad version of that. It, it expanded parts no one gave a shit about. It didn't focus on anything that anyone made that anything that made the game great. There were barely any shootouts really, which the whole game was shooting. And you know, at the end of the day, it was another movie that took itself way too serious. And if you're gonna take a drama like this seriously, you has to be good. It has to be tight. It has to have great characters. It has to have a, a story moving the plot forward. And they lean too much on a man solving his wife's murder. So that's my piece. Is it the worst game we ever talked about on this? No. I'd still put it above Rampage. I'd put it above Need for Speed. Um, It's big, bright, dumb, fun. But there's so many better action movies out there. If you want to watch a video game action movie, there's probably a bunch of those that are better. Uh, At the end of the day, it was just boring. And it kind of made me mad. Because I really like Max Payne. And I I would love to see this rebooted. And more faithful to the one crazy night approach and the Max Payne being undercover, and maybe adding some fucking dark humor to it. They tried to make it PG-13 and apply to a wide audience, and it failed. Sorry, you took a swing, you missed. Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. I can't in good conscience recommend it, because even if the movie was bad, sometimes you can lean on the main star and say, well, they did a good job. Marky Mark didn't. He phoned it in. He didn't have enough... He does not have enough personality to pull this one off. Uh, He does best, I think, when he plays those characters that are... Himbos, you know, a little little dim uh, with feelings and meaning well, like his character in Boogie Nights, which he crushed, even his character in like Ted, which was better than this. He fit better in that role. Uh, he, even Rockstar, man. Rockstar, Marky Mark was great for that. This he was not. That it, That's it. I'm done talking about this movie. If you have other opinions uh, about how great this movie was, I don't think that person exists. But if you are, shoot us an email, plottytime at gmail.com. You want to get to us faster on the socials to tell me how right I am because I'm amazing. Go to at Time on Instagram and Twitter. 
And if you want to, you know, watch our logo while you listen to the podcast, hop on over to YouTube, like and subscribe there. It really helps us out. Maybe someday we'll add some other video content for you. Maybe not. Who knows? But it all starts with you guys getting there and liking what we're doing so far. That does it for me today. Get out there, play some video games. Maybe watch some video game movies. I don't know. And I'll talk to you next time. Peace.